Back to you now at 912 to legalize or not legalize medical marijuana. That is the state question. Voters will head to the polls in June and decide whether or not Oklahoma becomes the 30th state in the country to do so. It's also been one of our most controversial proposals, not only among the people, but lawmakers as well. So here with us today to present their case, where they stand on this, we have Senators Anastasia Pittman and Dr. Irvin Yen. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for being here. First, just want to start off by getting your stance on this issue, what each of you thinks of this. And so, Senator Pittman, I'll start with you here. Oh, wonderful. Uh, my stance on um, legalizing medical marijuana is real simple. I have a bill, Senate Bill 704, that says to people, we don't have to feel the pressures of constituents by legalizing all marijuana. We can um, roll back some of the regulations that we have and utilize the 2014 Farm Bill. So I don't necessarily want to legalize marijuana for recreational use, mm -hmm. and medical marijuana has uh, some additional uh, limits that I would like to scale back. But you are for legalizing, legalizing medical marijuana. Yes. And what about you, Dr. Yen? You know, I, I believe that most states in America are headed down the road of legalizing marijuana in some form or fashion. I'm adamantly opposed to recreational marijuana. I don't yeah. think Oklahoma needs that. As a physician, it would be hard for me to, to argue against real medical marijuana. But I think most states that have passed medical marijuana, it's not really medical marijuana. I think people can get that medical marijuana card who just want to get high. And that's what I'm opposed to. And when I read 788, it's a bad bill. I hope it fails. Mm -hmm. But I do have a bill that is real medical marijuana. And it limits the usage of marijuana for four specific reasons. And I do want to get, you know, into that, into your 1120 in just a little bit. But first, you know, I found this and I thought this was interesting. It's from an addiction specialist at the University of British Columbia who likened smoking medical marijuana to a doctor giving a prescription to light yeah. up an opium pipe, which he says you would just never do. He said both have dangerous qualities. So Senator Pittman, why give the green light to this? Uh, you don't. You just simply don't. You, you but look you're at, for legalizing medical marijuana. But it's limited. It's limited. That's why my bill is very specific in repealing a law, uh, Katie's law, that will allow us to have uh, the medical marijuana up to 12%. There's no HTC in it. And you get to, you get to minimize how you distribute it. And it's got to be doctor prescribed. But it's not legalized marijuana. There's some limitations in it. And it's specifically designed for chronic back pain, epilepsy, seizures, those things. But medical marijuana could really give you a higher expansion of what we really are prepared for in Oklahoma. So you're introducing a bill just like Senator Yen is. Yes. So he has 1120, yours Senate is? Senate Bill 704. 704. Yes. And so it sounds like you're both trying to limit who yes. could use it if 788 were passed. And tell us your bill. I know 1120 says this would be limited to people with severe or life-threatening conditions. So explain to us, you know, loud and clear, who that would cover and who would well, not be covered my by bill this. currently is a work in progress and it's going to be changed a little bit and it's only going to have four reasons to utilize medical marijuana one is spastic paralysis from multiple sclerosis or paraplegia another is neuropathic pain that means pain from actual damage to nerves like you can get your leg lopped off and have pain in mm -hmm. fact you can have pain in your foot even though you don't have a foot uh, the third reason is intractable nausea and vomiting that's unresponsive to other forms of treatment and then the last one is chronic wasting disease from cancer or AIDS where you just need to consume more calories. So it's not to treat cancer or AIDS. It's if you're wasting away and you, you just can't consume enough calories to gain any weight. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very specific. It is not currently for anxiety or depression or post-traumatic stress disorder. And now, a lot of people asking about that. Now, so PTSD now, would not be covered if 1120 right, were passed. Cor correct. Now, if later on we get some data that shows it's useful for post-traumatic stress disorder, I'll be happy to put that in there. And do you agree with Senator Yen there? And is that what your bill also yes, discusses? Yes, I, I certainly agree with Dr. Yen and Senator Yen, my colleague, and my former chairman on the health committee. Um, but we've got to legalize it. But not in a way where people use the term loosely. Medical marijuana can be above 12%. My bill limits it uh, because we're talking about cannabis, we're talking about hemp, we're talking about things that are gonna be helpful so that we regulate it the right way. And not only that, I have state agencies that are preparing for additional cuts 
uh, to their budget. This is a revenue generating bill. This bill will allow us to bring in revenue, create jobs, and additionally uh, manage chronic pain. Do either of you have PTSD or chronic pain or deal with any of these things that people are saying, you know, I've tried this, I know it helps. And if not, how can you, how can you tell these people you can't use this for that because reason? I, because I've looked at the data, I've looked at the studies, and you can certainly get anecdotal stories of how marijuana has helped people with chronic pain or post-traumatic stress disorder. But if you look at the data and the studies, currently there's no good data that shows it's helpful. Now again, the studies are a bit limited because marijuana, according to our federal government, is illegal. Now hopefully over the next five, 10 years, we'll get more studies and we'll figure out things, uh, specifics about post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, anxiety. And obviously, you know, this has been a very polarized topic. People feel yes. very opinionated one way or another about this. If 788 were to pass, would doctors be forced to prescribe this to patients who have those, you know, severe or life-threatening uh, conditions that you're talking about? Or do you come across some instances where doctors who are morally against this idea can say, nope, not giving this to you? What happens on the physician side of things? I think the physicians have the discretion. And that's not what we're designed to do. We don't take away the limits of the physicians. They have background knowledge, they have licensures that we don't have, but we have constituents that have uh, utilized it. Uh, we're preparing for a study here in Oklahoma, the first study ever where we're gonna have some clinical trials. So we have patients, we have people who are using it and it, it works for them. So why not take a deeper look, let's expand our data, let's expand our research, and let's uh, help remove Katie's law so that the limitations of Oklahoma not being able to grow it, produce it, or let the State Department of Agriculture regulate it, that's what I'd like to see, and that's what my bill will do. And last question to you, Dr. Yan, before we end this first segment. What are you hearing from doctors, other doctors, about this? Oh, that they believe 788 is a terrible bill. You haven't heard from any doctor who agrees that it needs no, to No, I don't think I have, actually. I'm sure there are some, but but most of the doctors I know are adamantly opposed to it. Mm -hmm. They believe it's terrible. And in fact, virtually all the legitimate healthcare groups in Oklahoma are against 788. When you say they're against it, do you mean they're against the wording like you are, even though you've been a proponent of medical marijuana in the past, or they're, they're, they're against, not advocates they're, they're at all? They're against the specifics of 788. Now, uh -huh. most healthcare groups are for real medical marijuana, but it needs to be real medical marijuana, and 788 is not, in my humble opinion.